Father's Day. Father's Day is on Sunday. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Father's Day gathering at MCC. We're going to start by singing, so I hope that you'll join in with us.
thank you that you call us your children. Thank you that you call yourself our Father. Thank you that our, fa- our, our place is found in you. Thank you for all the things you are, God. us. Now, I've heard that the kids have a few things to say about their fathers, so watch out. What do you love about your dad? Mm. Playing race cars. Playing race cars? Yeah. Is he a nice dad? Yeah. 
there. Go, Jaden, jump, 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 jump. You like to jump with Daddy, right? Jump, jump. That he's thankful and he's kind and he's funny. The yeah. bad dance. When you when you're hurt, he comes and helps you. Ah. Uh. Okay, Daddy. You like Daddy? Okay. What do you love most about Dad? I like Dad. Tickles. What do you love most about Dad? I like Dad. I like Dad. My Daddy is the best. The best in bubbles. My Daddy is the best. And I love him just because I like Dad because he tickles me. <laughs> what else is funny? Um, and when he argues, okay. he <laughs> what's funny about that? Because he says funny stuff. Oh, how else is God like a dad? Um, because he looks after us. Mm -hmm. I like Dad because he tickles me. Mm -hmm. What about pancakes? Yeah. What do you like about the pancakes? Yeah. He puts colors in them. Yeah, what colors? Turquoise. What do you love about Daddy? Because he's really funny and he loves us. Aww. And he makes great thoughts like this one, eh? Yeah. And what else? Uh, what's, he, what's he doing now? He's cooking. Cooking the dinner. Awesome, Daddy. Why do you think God made Daddy? Because God makes everyone because because people live. People, oh, yeah. And they don't make giants because they're going to scare us. Yeah. I like about Daddy that he takes me for all bike rides. And he cuddles me. Yeah. I love about my dad is that he does cool stuff with me. Um, I love my dad because he laughs at stuff that doesn't make sense to me. Because they build stuff at work so they get money and <laughs> and they can buy stuff for for our whole family why do you think god made dad um, i don't know you don't know wait a second i got this yeah um oh, god is everybody's dad huh Well, good morning, MCC, and welcome to our MCC online, as usual. My name's Ian Waddington, and I'm the Sunday Congregation Pastor. And uh, it's isn't it wonderful to be in Level 2, or Level 2.5 anyway? But welcome particularly to this morning, to this Father's Day celebration, and particularly to all men this morning. Um, but especially, of course, fathers. And by that, I mean fathers, stepfathers, adoptive fathers, grandfathers, uncles, those that want to be fathers but can't, father figures, and of course, last but not least, mothers who are also having a fathering role. Um, welcome to you all, and I hope you have a great morning this morning. Wasn't it awesome to hear from the kids on their take on uh, caregivers and fathers? Um, if you're watching for the first time this morning, we'd love for you to comment new uh, in the comments below so that we can welcome you and get in touch with you. Also, great to have uh, everybody meeting in their, in their house church groups. Um, if you haven't been able to connect with a group this week, 
then also please comment House Church below and we'll make sure that you're linked up with someone somewhere uh, next week. Thanks too for your generosity. Thank you for giving in the spirit of the Lord to uh, special funds for the food bank, special funds for Lebanon, for the Beirut disaster, as well as regular giving and, and the blessing that that is to MCC. Again, if you are not a, um, a regular contributor to MCC and would like to be, comment give in the, uh, in the section below. So uh, what I'd like to do now is give a prayer for fathers, for caregivers, um, and this is adapted from a prayer by Carol Penner. So let's pray. Father, when we entered this world as babies, you gave us caregivers who watched and waited on us, who fed and clothed us, who taught us how to live. We pause in this moment of silence to give thanks for one special person who has changed our life, for their work and their love which has shaped us. Lord, we give you thanks. We pray today for caregivers, for mothers, fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, aunts and uncles, brothers and sisters and cousins, neighbors and family friends, for all who care for children. Give them and us the wisdom we need to do this work. Open our ears and eyes to the real needs of those in our charge. Open our hearts and hands to meet these needs. Give us endurance and patience and hope. And above all, give us compassion, treating each child as we would want to be treated. You know us, God. You know that there are places where we have failed as caregivers. We also need your help to mend broken or strained relationships. We need forgiveness. We need closure. Grant us peace in our relationships. God, you love us with a father's love. You care for us more tenderly than any mother. You are the great caregiver. Help us this week to be aware of your love, your gaze upon us, that is encouraging us, sustaining us, and directing us. Amen. And now we're going to go and listen to some of the reflections from some of our MCC fathers about their fathers. Hi, my name is Chris, and uh, I grew up in the United States, in Colorado, which is in the western part of the U.S. It's very mountainous, uh, lots of outdoor space. It's very similar to uh, some parts of New Zealand, particularly in the South Island. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place uh, to grow up. So one of the things I remember most about my dad growing up was that there was always uh, something going on. He was always working on a project. He was always uh, doing something, fishing, woodworking, doing something like that. And, and we were always, uh, my brother and I, always invited into that experience with him. So um, there was never anything that we particularly did with my dad as far as like, you know, going on trips or anything like that. We were always just doing stuff with my dad. And he always brought us into what he was uh, working on, taught us how to use tools, uh, you know, took us fishing, taught us sort of on the go. And we were able to have uh, discussions and just yeah, bond and do all the father-son stuff uh, as we were just doing activities. So one of the things that I most remember about my dad that I would love to pass on to my kids, uh, and, and it's even true today, is that I can talk to my dad about anything. Uh, there's really nothing that's off limits. There's nothing that I can't approach him about. Uh, he's always made me feel like uh, he was listening to what I had to say, even if it was silly and foolish. and. Um, he's always just been a really great sounding board for both uh, major and minor decisions in my life And I hope that my kids feel the same way about me I hope that uh, they always feel that they can talk to me that they can approach me 
uh, that even if I don't have answers for them, that I will always listen and help them process. And so um, that's one of the things I'm most grateful for, uh, for my dad passing on to me, and I hope that I can pass that on to my children. Good morning, MCC. My name is Lito, and um, I grew up in the Philippines with my loving mom and dad and five siblings. Um, I've been here in New Zealand for 11 years now. Uh, I moved here after I married my lovely wife, Tina. And now I'm a father of three lovely, amazingly active children. A memorable experience with my dad. Um, when I was uh, growing up, my dad would always take us six kids to our uh, small family uh, farm, coconut farm. Uh, at least twice a month and um, yeah it's a good six hour drive from our hometown or from my family home um, and uh, it's not a very uh, easy ride you know uh, if you pack eight, uh, a family of eight in a small wagon but once we get there I love being with nature and so especially when you are with your family it's just a memorable experience at home, my dad would um, grow all sorts of vegetables in the backyard and all sorts of animals. We have chickens, quails, ducks, uh, we have dogs, we have cats. It's amazing what you can grow um, in a small section, um, but he didn't have orchids. My dad taught us the value or the importance of good work ethics. He would always encourage us to give our best in whatever we do. A job done haphazardly is never good enough. Um, he said, if you have good work ethics, you can you know, go and work anywhere in the world and people will like you. Um, my dad was not a good cook, um, but on weekends when he is at home, he would always help my mom in the kitchen. Um, he would chop vegetables and meat or he would wash all the pots and the dishes. Um, yeah, so they really work as a team. My um, mom was allergic to um, detergent soap, so uh, my poor dad would have to wake up five o'clock in the morning to watch, uh, wash uh, cloth nappies and family clothes before going to work in the morning. So yeah, um, nowadays we are teaching our children the value of work and our kids have small family jobs, you know, uh, that they have to do before they can have their screen time. So uh, hopefully they will um, cherish what they are learning from us um, as parents. So when the time comes that they have to move and live on their own, I hope that they learn a lot from us. Hi, I'm Gary Cousins. I had a great dad. He was a dairy farmer and his father was a dairy farmer as well. Uh, when my dad was young, he was very good at tennis, um, but uh, <clears throat> his father used to make him do milking, so he never used to be able to play any sports, tennis or whatever. So when I was a young lad, um, all us kids, uh, we played everything, like rugby, cricket, cubs. <clears throat> In fact, one summer he even had us uh, go to recorder and choir classes, um, uh, well, until I was chucked out because uh, of lack of talent. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> anyway, he uh, he tried to get us to do a whole lot of things. And the other thing he teed up for us was working at the PCL, um, which I think has been just knocked down and messy there. It's uh, uh, he used to make uh, stock food. And so he got us a job in there, and we thought we were the um, pretty special. We were making huge money for kids. Um but it was hard work and there was rats, live and dead ones, running all through the through the place. And um, evidently it turned out that he'd approached them for a job for us. Um, and even if they didn't have a job, he was going to pay them to get us to work there so that we would work hard at school. Because basically he wanted us to uh, work hard in an education because he, didn't, uh, he, he just went to uh, high school. Um, so whereas with my boys... Uh, I sort of went the next step to, uh, I was more interested in teaching them about business. Um, uh, and one of the things I did there is I got some uh, plastic bags, um, some potato bags with holes in them, and uh, <clears throat> got my boys to collect 
um, pine cones and uh, we'd sell them at uh, church for $2, um, of which um, he would get $1.50 um, and I would get 50 cents. So um, uh, after a period of time, um, my son asked me how come I was getting uh, 50 cents and I wasn't doing any of the work. So I explained to him, oh, well, I was a businessman. I was running the business. I'd set up the business. So I didn't have to work in it, but I got the money. And uh, so it was, uh, he's, he, he was quite young at the time, but he's never forgotten it. He brings it up quite frequently. <laughs> so <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is uh, hopefully we help our kids to stand on our shoulders so that they can do better than we do. Kia ora whanau. My name's Josh and I grew up in Riverhead on a little lifestyle block with my grandparents, my uncle and auntie, um, and obviously my family. And recently I was also, I also got married at the beginning of the year to the amazing Danielle. And because of that, I got to become the proud dad of this little guy. So, obviously today is Father's Day and today I want to share a little special, uh, a special moment that I had with my, with my dad. And for me it wasn't so much an individual moment that came to mind, but really a, a cluster of similar moments. You know, things like uh, wrecking cars with, with dad when I, when, I was a, when I was a kid and pulling, pulling apart the cars um, to sell it, sell for, sell for parts. Uh, stuff like uh, getting out the jigsaw and, and making wooden, wooden guns to go and play uh, cowboys and Indians and, and stuff like that. And, and, and even recently, in, in recent times, getting outside and spending the weekends in, in between the lockdown obviously um building building a chicken house recently and, and moments like that really really stood out to me and it was wasn't necessarily spending a lot of time talking or even doing talking about anything in particular but really just the quality time of spending time with each other and those moments to me are the well, ones that really stand out as just priceless moments um something that i really respect about my dad is his ability throughout our, uh, throughout our, throughout my, out my life really, as, as I've watched him as I've been growing up, is he has constantly made sacrifices. Um, I've seen so many times where he's made selfless sacrifices for his family, uh, done things for others, and, and, and constantly, when times have been hard, this ability to humble himself and, and put aside his pride to do what, what needed to be done in moments that were very tough. And that's something that I really respect about my father was was that ability to unselfishly sacrifice um, and and just humble yourself and humble your pride and put aside your pride in those moments and and that's something that I will always very much respect about my father and uh, hope to one day pass on to my own children as well and I know Dad probably isn't watching this live stream today but I love you Dad. Kia ora Church Fano, uh, my name's Chris and I'm married to Kathy. Uh, we've got two boys. Um, a memory I have of my dad um, growing up is uh, our family holidays. We used to load up our old van and trailer and with a mountain of unnecessary items and head on up to Kaipara Harbour where we would have um, like a, a good week or something like just being outdoors and we would go canoeing and build like entire cities and the sand and just have um, fun um, outside and that love of just being outside and God's creation and um, seeing nature is something that's uh, rubbed off on me um, so much so that I have actually built a career out of being outdoors mainly and um, I remember my dad um, saying when he would go running in the Waitakere's when you used to be allowed to do that um, that the canopy of the trees was like seeing um, like a cathedral that a cathedral is built for the glory of God and that seeing like the sunlight coming through it was just beautiful and it was better than any cathedral and um, yeah I just I still like being outdoors and and that's something now we do with the boys uh, if that's going to the beach or going for a walk or a bike ride or something we just enjoy um, getting outdoors and um, having fun something that uh, 
that I learned from my dad and I would like to pass on to my kids is um, just how I observed how he would work well with people. Um, my dad was always in a leadership position throughout his life basically that he would be encouraging people and inspiring people of lots of different personalities to um, to do well at, at what they were good at and, and bring out their gifts and um, you know in this world we've got to work with other people um, and we're all different personalities and and to be wise in how you you work with others and to work well as part of a team that's something that I'd really like to see our, um, our boys do good at and to do that with real heart that they really care about those that um, that they work with I'm, I'm thinking you know about um, not just in like family life but in what they do in the community and, and in the workplace as well one day good morning today is father's day today we have seen and heard men talk about their own father now for just a few minutes, let's think about God. Remember, he also has a name. He is our Father. The Hebrews would never have dared address God as Ab or Abba, the Aramaic word for Daddy, which gradually came to mean Dear Father. So Jesus shocked many of his contemporaries. He referred to God as his Father, and he invited his followers to call God Father, and rather than a typical Middle Eastern power-wielding patriarch, Jesus depicted God primarily as tender and compassionate father, someone who extends grace to not only failures and sinners, but also to even the self-righteous. In John's Gospel, Jesus calls God his father 156 times. The expression Abba Patea is found three times in the New Testament, all in prayer. Remember Gethsemane, Abba, Father? Everything is possible for you, take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Jesus tells us to understand God as Father. When we speak to him, we should call him by name. We should say, Our Father. Now, now why is this so important? The 20th century writer A.W. Tozer made a stunning claim. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Really? Yes, absolutely. Why? Because there's a truth there that cuts across the whole universe. We become like whatever we worship. To truly understand God as Father is to transform what fathers can and should be. God is Father. Because of this, he is the supreme model for all fathers. I would like us this morning to think and to grasp three things about Father from this amazing God who is our Father. God, first of all, is Father who reveals himself. He discloses who he is to his children. Christians don't worship and follow a hidden God. As some religions do, they believe that their deity is unknowable. Instead, the Christian faith has a God who is Father and who is knowable. How? Well, there are many ways, but the most important one is that God is supremely known through Jesus. No one has seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the Father has made him known. That's from John chapter 1, verse 18. There is a myth among men that fathers must be staunch, that fathers should not reveal much of their inner self, or maybe that men cannot because, after all, that's not their job. They're male. Or that this is the mother's role. She should disclose herself to the child. That's not God's intention. Whatever society or culture may or may not say, 
if we are to be true to the one Father, who is our final and best model, then we fathers will reveal ourselves to our kids. We will be real. Remember how Jesus was real? Remember his walk? Remember how the heart of the only Son, who is himself God, is revealed in the shortest verse of the Bible? John eleven thirty five, Jesus wept. Remember again in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus revealed his anguish to others. God the Father is revealed in Jesus. He is knowable. Earthly fathers should be knowable too. Not hidden, not remote, not distant. Real and knowable. Now secondly, God who is Father understands. He understands his children. To be understood changes everything. It is a source of great comfort, of great delight. It's coming alongside heart to heart. And just to know that someone understands us is a tectonic shift in life. And this is God, our Father. He understands us. This is transformative. Remember Psalm 103, verse 14. For he knows our frame. For he knows how we are formed. He understands our constitution. He remembers that we are dust. Not only does God, our Father, know and understand us, he has brought us into his very own family. Again, these words from Scripture, Galatians 4, verse 6. Ultimately, he wanted us all to be adopted as sons and daughters. Because you are now part of God's family, he sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, and the Spirit calls out, Abba, Father. The idea of being aware of what children are really like, how they tick, is a barrier for many fathers. It's too much effort. It's scary. <laughs> Men have other priorities. We are males, after all. But yet this is supremely important. Fathers need to understand their children. To get to know their responses. To hear their stories. To meet their friends and know about them. To learn about the children's sorrows and joys, to see their potential and to recognise their gifts. This enables a father to understand his children. Yes, it does take time. Yes, it may be an effort. Yes, it can feel strange. But we fathers need to understand our kids, even as God understands us. Mealtime, bedtime, outside, inside, often. Know your child. Each child, know and understand your children. This is the pattern of God, the Father, who knows and understands us. And finally, the third point. Father God loves his children. What does Father love look like? Now, this is important. Father love is not the same as indulgence. Do you remember this verse from Hebrews 12, verse 7? Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children, for what children are not disciplined by their father? Of course, the idea of discipline is not one of harshness, let alone brutality. Discipline has in it the word disciple, one who is a learner, who is therefore working with a learner who needs help and guidance and assistance. To fail to discipline is to neglect a child. It's to fail them, for discipline prepares children for life and its realities. Discipline is anchored in love. So discipline is a positive thing. So also are other expressions of love, such as teaching, caring, and forgiving. All these are true of God our Father. God teaches us, cares for us, forgives us. But finally, I would like you to remember this. Every father who knows God as our father will also model love. Love that looks like the love represented in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3. Praise be to God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Love, you see, is expressed in compassion 
and comfort. Hey, hold on. Compassion and comfort are associated with feminine qualities. Yet God, our Father, has these very qualities, and so should each father on earth. The story of the prodigal son is the story of comfort and compassion by a father. Failure by fathers to express these qualities is to deny a child a basic and vital love. Coming from a male, this love is masculine. Although it carries the same name, it is different. Different from feminine love. Love, in this way, is not only nourished, it's deepened. It's amplified. It's changed when Father's love is expressed with compassion and comfort. What's our message on Father's Day? Let's make God our Father, our model. Let's demonstrate His characteristics. To do that, we will not be an absent father, but we will be there and real for our children. We will make it our business to listen deeply to them and to give each child the gift of being understood. And we will truly love them, both by loving discipline and by expressing the unique loving compassion and comfort that only a father can give to his kids. Let's make this our Father's Day resolution, to be a father like that. How deep the Father's love um, is for us. So why don't you sing that with us?
deep the Father's love is for us, for each and every one of us. And I hope this morning you felt encouraged um, in what you're doing and inspired um, for the days ahead as we look to see how we can impart the love of God and the wisdom of the people that have gone before us into our children, into um, our, our, our wider families and communities into this next generation. If you'd like to find out more about MCC or the God that we sing of and speak of, we would love to chat with you. Um, please send us a message um, and we will get in touch straight away. Um, but other than that, all we have left to say is Happy Father's Day and we hope you have a fantastic day spending time with your loved ones. Ka kite anō.